Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com and it's Monday, it's June 18th, this will be our chart lesson for the day and it really was an uptrend today basically from right after the opening we had a channel working down, we had a break, new low and then it reversed and because we closed here on Friday and um, 8.30 open here, there would be a gap between this point and this point on the daily chart. And so generally, prices will try to fill that, and that's really what happened. We tried to fill that gap today. And that's not always, you know, prices won't always do that on one day. I seem like there was a couple of days ago where we had the same thing. It was Friday. I think it was this day. Friday, and you can see... I believe we really filled it that day. Uh, it seems like there was one day we did not fill that gap. I can't remember what day it was. But anyway, I'm not going to go real far back. But generally, you'll fill those gaps within, you know, this, after the mark, in that same day. Within it, There's some rule that says, Three minutes, three hours, three days, three weeks, three months, something of that nature. Um, you know, I don't know how accurate that is, but it, it generally you will fill those gaps pretty good. The market does not like gaps on a chart. Uh, they like to fill those gaps, and for whatever reason, they generally will fill them. So just be aware of that. So we traded down, and we traded, really, we got outside the overnight lows here for just shortly, and then the rest of the day, we were all with inside the overnight highs and lows and we were trending up really for most of the day although it really got flat up here I mean this is almost flat here but we still has a little upward bias to it there is a two-tier channel here it doesn't do you a whole lot of good now if you drew it off those first two swings um, generally I like to use the close and so when I did that it didn't really work out but once we had this uh, bounce here it fits pretty well and you get another uh, bounce here which I wouldn't have been afraid to take if it hadn't have been a doji and so I was a little bit leery of that especially if this channel is correct we had an overshoot here and so I was not really willing to go long right there personally uh, I don't think that's a good long so I didn't mark it and so we really never got another bounce off that key entry point. So this trend line doesn't do you a whole lot of good other than the fact that it may keep you to the upside looking for us to fill that gap. Notice we got a close outside here and then a couple of legs up and we've been selling off. Um, that went right into the close and we've been selling off since then. Yeah. So, um, so there is a two-tier channel. I believe this channel is correct. However, I don't think it would have done you a whole lot of good unless you had a much better uh, signal bar here. This one was tempting, but we're really trending down strongly there. And there's a possibility this could be a little spike in channel and maybe there's some other channel coming down through here. So I just was not real crazy about going long here. I would have liked this one better, but it's such a neutral bar. Let me back out of here can see that's a doji is really more bearish than a doji it didn't even close its middle it closed a tick or so off it's off the middle of that bar so it's not even really a doji it's more of a bearish bar so I'm not crazy about that bar in any way and then you don't get a true reversal pattern until way up here and then that's a now you're outside of this little short-term trend line so I'm not crazy about getting long up here and there wasn't a lot there were not a lot of opportunities to get really didn't even trade this afternoon if you didn't there was quite a few here early on and then it went silent this is a possibility here uh i'll talk about that when we get to it but i wasn't crazy about it for some particular reason so we'll talk about it but early on there were a few trades so um there's a nice reversal pattern here even though and notice it never would have gotten stopped out if you hung on but i doubt i'm gonna you know most people shouldn't hang on through all this you should go ahead and exit and look for another entry so um, but anyway first trade I saw we were coming down seven o'clock hour we had a little bounce here and you get a first entry short and then a second entry short so and you're looking for a retest of the low 
that's a great place to enter right there on the short and it moves on down pretty quickly and so you could have got a runner there and got a few points out of that and then you get the reversal pattern notice that um, even this little channel you're moving down you get a close outside of moon and there's a higher low here and you might have considered entering there but there's not a whole lot of room there between that and the EMA and you may push down again and so I'm not crazy about that one but it is a higher low and if you got enough room to get out here or if you entered on a limit order maybe uh, but your true reversal came here so I like this one and it would have been nice if it would have taken on off which a lot of times it will like this one does over here I'll talk about when we get to it but it's still a reversal it was good for a scalp and that was it and then of course we're working back and you get a second entry long here at your first close and you get us outside of this little short-term channel and you get a second entry long so I liked it it was good for a scalp and then we come back down and notice that low and you get first test double test and a nice bullish bar. Uh, I liked going along there it actually came back down and broke one tick lower but it didn't stop you out then it took off again but at this point it's starting to look like a trading range I actually had this down here at that point and so I don't think you want to go long right into that it would have worked but you don't know that ahead of time so I would have skipped that one and notice you get a reversal pattern here but it's right back into those highs so I'd like to see, it, it is a breakout pullback and so you might consider going long there but I, I just think it's still too risky into that resistance but when it pushes through again and gives that failed second entry short I like going long then because now you've had you tried to go lower and you, twice and you made a higher low both times and so uh, and it's a second entry counting off this high uh, that's a double bottom so that's a new low so it's a failed second entry short so I like that one and notice how it takes off there and you do come back to the trend line right here but you're just so far away from the EMA and you're getting close to these highs so I don't like that and I definitely don't like this one right into those highs right there there is a second entry long here but it's just right into the to all those highs and you can see see that right there Yeah, well, I can't get that line to work I don't know but there we go and uh, and then we sell off you're a long way away from the EMA you're looking for prices to come back but you generally you want to wait with with those two bars right there matching lows I'd wait on a lower high that doesn't come to here that's right back into the EMA right into the support resistance line um, it works but you don't know that here's your true reversal notice how you push through you come back that's a reversal pattern I like going short below that bar right there and you actually get your clothes outside two legs to a new low and then it bounces now this is the one I'm not crazy about you do have a break and two legs down but we've been trending down pretty you know fairly strongly there and you really don't have a whole lot of evidence to say this is your trend line it looks correct there and when it bounces here again it really looks correct there um, but I don't you know I, there's not enough touches and evidence to me to say hey I'm willing to take a first entry there I want a higher low and that comes here and the bar is too neutral to negative and it's right into the EMA so I'm not gonna take it either and then we're coming back uh, you get a little trend line moving down you get a close outside move to a new low and then you get a nice bullish bar that alone probably wouldn't be enough to convince me there but you get a little double test of of that level right there you test it once twice and you do get that little push lower that traps people and this trend line has played out so and you are looking for a new high based on this short-term trend line notice how it does make it a couple of legs up and then it sells off again so that's a maybe I'm not it's right there at being blue but it's you know it's not a perfect setup by any means so I just marked it green you get a higher low right here right back into the highs 
after you just barely push forward there. Notice how it does push you up and then makes a double top and sells off. This was a double test. Notice this level right here. We tested it once. We tested it twice. And it actually broke higher and turned and went out the other side. I like going short there. If nothing else, just to ride it back down to here. It's a second entry short. First entry. Actually, it's not a second entry short. Um, it was a second entry short when it turned down here. But it's a lower high off of a double test is basically what it is. So, um, and it's a big bearish bar. It actually went higher and then turns down. And you may only be looking for it to come back to this trend line, but notice how it pushes on through and gives you your first close outside before it makes those two legs up. And that gets you into the two o'clock hour. So, um, there's just not, you know, there just was kind of a quiet day. Uh, there were quite a few trades early here. And then you just kind of had to see it. Uh, and again, you might argue for this one to be green as well. There's a couple of them in here. You know, if you wanted to be aggressive, if you didn't get to trade the morning, there's one. And here was the other one. I'm not going to mark that one at all just simply because that bar is too, uh, too bearish. But there's a couple opportunities there. I just don't think I would take them that late in the day. Uh, of course, this is not very late in the day. We just didn't have a lot of price action after that. But uh, this was, you know, just prior to lunchtime. And it is the third touch of that line, the way I've got it drawn there. And it does fit on the top with an overshoot. And it wasn't long after we had a close outside. Generally, when you see that overshoot and it starts correcting, you're either going to get a break there or very soon thereafter. And even though we didn't get a break there, because that really just confirmed the trend line. And, you know, if we hadn't, have if it hadn't have held there and it went on through, I would have erased that and said it's not valid. But because it did bounce there, you can see it's, you know, it looks valid. And I believe it is valid. So, you know, you go with what you see there. But really, if, if you didn't trade this morning, it was a really quiet and slow afternoon. And, you know, you probably wouldn't have had much choice but to maybe take one of those green ones if you really wanted to trade. Uh, but I prefer, you know, I prefer something more, um, you know, I prefer it to be red or blue. And like I said the other day, you know, green doesn't necessarily mean you're going to take the trade. It just means it's a setup that, that fits our criteria, but it's not a great setup. And, uh, but I mark them because if I don't, I'm going to get 400 questions by email. So I just would rather talk about it in the video. Uh, and then have to answer a bunch of emails of everybody asking me, what about this one? What about this one? And, and th this one might have looked better on your chart. If you had a nice bullish bar, by all means, take it. But on my chart, I didn't like it. And so I did not mark it. And again, you know, some trades will look better on my chart than yours. And some will look better on your chart than mine. But in the end, it all works out. You could trade my chart. If you can trade price action, you could trade my chart. Or I could swap with you and trade yours. We might take a few different trades, but we, you know, I can trade either. We can tra both trade either one. So just because your chart doesn't look exactly like mine, don't. People get so upset about that. They want their chart to look just like mine. Unfortunately, with tick charts, the nature of them, the way they work, they're not static like time-based charts. So no two are going to look alike. As long as you have a same number of similar bars and the same patterns, everything is good. So don't worry about it and go with it. Um, your signal bars may not always look like mine, but that's just the nature of it. And it's okay. And I get a lot of questions about this, the volume charts. If you, if you don't have access to tick charts, our second choice would be volume charts. And you, you know, if you're trading the ES, start with a 6,500, somewhere in that range, and you can adjust it up or down by a few hundred if necessary, if you're getting, you know, similar type data. So, um, but I, I always prefer tick charts, but there's not much difference, honestly, between a volume chart and a tick chart when you put it on, put them up side by side. But uh, my preference has always been tick charts. And the only reason we switched to volume charts at one time was because for a short period of time, they made some kind of change to the tick data at the CME and it threw our tick charts off and really screwed them up. And so, to, uh, counter that we went to the volume chart but 
a couple within a couple of weeks they'd fixed the problem or they changed it back and that resolved our tick chart so we're back to tick charts so tick charts are always our preferred chart and if for whatever reason they're not available it's volume charts and if you don't have that you may not have any option but to chain trade five minute charts but you're not going to see near the um, you're not going to see near the details you're not going to get as many trades and it just they're harder to trade in my opinion so that's just my personal opinion and i think if you look at them all three stacked up side by side you'll likely agree and if you like the volume chart better it's not that big a deal go with it so but um, i think if you compare either one of them volume or tick to a five minute chart you're going to agree with me but that you can just see so many more details and you're you're really it's like taking a knife to a gunfight. If you're going to trade a five minute chart and I get to trade a tick chart, I got an advantage over you. And you need every advantage in this business that you can get. It's hard enough as it is. So you don't want to be at a disadvantage right out of the gate because you can't use the proper tools. And it's like any job. You know, if we're going to be a professional trader, we need to use professional tools. So make sure you have data that's reliable. Make sure your brokers are reliable and make sure your charting is reliable and because we don't want to cut corners there never cut corners in those three areas because it will cost you in the end i promise you you won't save any money you'll, it'll cost you money but anyway that's enough for today uh, rather slow day really especially from 10 o'clock on but i'm gonna wrap it up we'll be back again to do it tomorrow but i'm done for today this is mac with priceactiontradingsystem.com and we'll see you next time